Hey, Nation Nation, we are back. We are across a couple of continents today. So we have Michael Jenkins from Australia and uh, Ken Dwight from uh, Houston, Texas. Uh, and as I always like to do, a couple of, couple of comments up front. So Michael, um, we took some time uh, many months ago to talk about the Australia fires and, and made that some of our conversation and both, you know, just sort of a high level and all the way down to the supply chain for uh, shipment of uh, parts. And um, I believe you might be aware, but uh, this last month or so, we really took it on the West Coast, man. I mean, I, I already have trouble breathing. <laughs> the smoke did not help, let me tell you. So I thought of you, but boy, we took it. Um, it's, it's, it's doing a little better up here in the Seattle area. California has a little flare up going on, but Anyways, I don't, you know, always like to kind of start off on a little bit of a personal note. Uh, the topic of the uh, the topic of the month with these gentlemen. Oh, well, one other. I'll try a joke, but you know, your two last names sound like a law firm, Jenkins and Dwight. You know, <laughs> you guys should be should have been a law firm, maybe in a future life. Uh, we'll see how that how that joke lands. But let's get going. We're talking lateral movement. Michael, kick us off on the concept of lateral movement, and uh, what what does that mean? One of the things out there that's really overlooked is this thing called lateral movement. And we're not talking about ligaments moving over bones or anything silly like that. We're talking about malware, viruses, and hackers moving between your computers on your network. Seems a bit odd. We put all this money into hardware firewalls. We have all this great endpoint protection. We think about strategies, stopping people clicking on emails or phishing content, that kind of thing, and all kinds of other malware things. But one of the things no one really talks about is this thing called lateral movement. Now, really what it is, is either an automated piece of software or a hacker that's gained access to some means to get access onto your workstation, and then your workstation it's not interesting. There's nothing on it they actually want. They want the CEO's workstation or the finance officer or the person who just happens to have all the banking codes and passwords and things like that. They want to get a keylogger onto that machine or even better, can they get to the server because there's some credential that's loose or something like that. And so what they do is they use a workstation inside a network that they've compromised to then jump to another workstation in the network. Now this can take months. They can sit there for many months observing keystrokes and screen captures and, and watch what you're doing to determine, can we get this person's home details and banking? Can we get the boss's details? Can we get around this network? Now, we're all thinking we're safe. We're behind these firewalls and things like that. Recently in Russia, there was, I believe, $340 million. I don't know whether that would be in US, Australia, whatever it is. It's probably Russian money. It's a lot. It's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot of money. And this group, what they did is they actually got their software through a phishing attempt onto a PC. It was a boring PC. They took many, many months. They worked their way up and they got to the head of the banking area. And then they managed from that to find out this banker moved to other banks regularly and got onto those as well. And they ended up hacking around about 30 banks across Russia, Africa, and even one in the UK. And what they did was they managed to get all the little details that they needed over many months to extract this $340 million out through ATMs. Yeah. What they actually did is they had the ATMs randomly spitting out $1,000 at a time. And the person in the crowd who happened to be there scooped it up and ran away. And lots of other bystanders also grabbed a bunch of money and ran away. Now, the interesting thing about it is because this hack was lateral movement and moved between workstations, and because everyone was thinking of firewalling the network and not firewalling each workstation from each workstation, they managed to get all the details they needed to get right to the highest levels of this bank. And the interesting thing was, they didn't take money from people's accounts. They took money from the bank's account. Oh, wow. Now because, yeah. yeah. So what this meant is the average person didn't report it. Because I didn't notice my bank account suddenly lose some money but the banks did notice it. And the way that they did it so slowly, it looked like accounting errors. So within the bank, they had worked out, mm, someone's done something wrong, let's go back and look through the records and trace it in the history and figure this out. But these guys, because they were able to move around between workstation to workstation, they figured out the lingo, 
they worked out how they talk to each other, what they write in their emails to each other. They figured out what programs they used. They figured out what the keywords were, the passwords. They figured all this out and they made it look like an accounting issue. Now, a couple of good things about that for them. If you were a bank and you just lost a couple of million dollars, are you going to tell the world? Not no. if it's an accounting issue. If it was your bank and it was your account, yes, we have to tell you. Because of privacy acts and things like that, all the regulations, if there's a breach, we need to notify you. But if it's an internal accounting issue, you don't report it. So here we have 30 or 40 banks all losing money all over the place, not telling each other. So nobody put it together. Nobody worked out that all of this was linked. So what we have is somebody through a phishing attempt, so an email arrived, had a link on it. They downloaded from that link a little piece of malware that got onto this PC. The PC started logging their keystrokes, taking screenshots, looking through their files, reading their other emails, gave them remote access. Now, part of this, and I look, you have to look into a bit more further, but part of this apparently is they were able to look through webcams, see what was going on in the office as well. <laughs> and they managed to get across to the security system. Yeah. So they were actually in the security cameras watching the actual bank. So these guys, they didn't do it quickly. They, did, they took time, but they found the weak protection between workstations and jumped around between them. Now, this is why you need to be very careful. When you choose your antivirus, you're not trying to protect you. You're trying to protect yourself. You're trying to protect everybody in your business. You're trying to protect all your friends, relatives, everybody. So protecting yourself from this malware that can jump around and move around is very important. Turning on simple things like the Windows firewall, we've all got it, it came with Windows, it's there. People go, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. Let's just turn it off. Let's make some big holes in it. Well, what they're actually doing is allowing this malware to quietly jump from computer to computer to computer. And because nobody needs to actually be sitting there and making this happen, it's all automated, they just sit back and take the money. Yeah. So that's what happened. And that's a good explanation of lateral movement. It moves around your network from workstation to workstation. And what I propose to say is that people are worrying too much about firewalls. Yeah. They're worrying too much about all these other things without also adding to that lateral movement. And a lot of yeah. the great, and yeah, a lot of those great antivirus out there do cover this. Um, I know for instance, Trend Micro has a built in firewall facility. I know that a number of them try and do this. But a lot of us IT admin types and MSPs, yeah, it's a problem. Can't run this, can't run that. This gets blocked, that gets blocked. It's easy to turn it off. They're safe. They're behind a hardware firewall. We need to rethink our practices. Yeah. And that, yeah. So that's where we're at. That's what, that's what I would like to talk about today and have talked about today. You, you, you have. And Ken, I want to I wanna frame a question to you. I'm going to twist it around a little bit, but... So, and thank you. I mean, I get it on the lateral movement thing, but I think um, you're also talking about it's not just the firewall. And maybe Ken, maybe you want to, maybe you want to pitch in on that topic uh, that it's not just the firewall. <laughs> well, and, and as we all know, real security requires multi-layered uh, approach. One layer, pretty low level layer is a firewall, hardware firewall, there's software firewalls. And, and as Michael says, the antivirus and, and, and all, all the other stuff. But I think a couple of things are important about this whole issue of lateral movement, as Michael so brilliantly uh, demonstrated with that example. Uh, for one, there's still a misperception in most people's mind, and unfortunately, I saw this repeated by a major vendor just recently, talking about email as the, the main way that computers get infected. And 20 years ago, 10 years ago, that was the case. And today, for home users, that's still the most common infection vector. Mm -hmm. But for ransomware, and this has been consistent over the last year or two, uh, anywhere from a, about at the low end, 75 to the high end, over 90% of all ransomware attacks in the last year have been initiated through RDP, not through email. And so part of the reason I mentioned this is because uh, people that need to know this either have forgotten it or haven't heard it or haven't paid attention to it or whatever. And, and so uh, lateral movement is another example of the fact that the user doesn't have to, have to open a malicious email to get infected. Mm -hmm. uh, it's another method 
that a computer can get infected by malware without the user doing anything wrong or stupid or having their defenses down. And so I, I think that was another you know, really important reason that Michael brought up the subject of lateral movement, along with the fact that it also ties into something that's been a problem for years, the whole issue of supply chain attacks. Once they're moving laterally, uh, just like Target so many years ago, it was their heating ventilation air conditioning contractor through their point of sale terminals that led to that massive hack. And one of the examples that's been used recently is one of the high-end hotels in Las Vegas uh, got hacked through their fish tank. And so wow. there, there's so many ways that you know, the days of, of malware coming in through an infected email are not gone, but they're, they're surely not the only infection vector these days. And I think it's important for us to talk about the fact that, that there are so many other things to be aware of, to watch out for. Yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm going to bring this one in for a landing um, and, and stay on the ranch with the topic at hand. But I, I, I do want to give a shout out. I watched a movie uh, this past weekend um, that talks towards lateral uh, movement. And, and it's, uh, it's a comedy. It's called Jexi, J-E-X-I. I don't know if you've seen Jexi. Uh, it, I, I had to go find it on Showtime, but here it says it's on Hulu and some of the others, but what Jexy is, and again, it's a comedy and it's in the Bay Area and the guys in tech and all that, but um, he has a phone, so the basic voice assistant uh, that you would expect Siri to be or, you know, the phone of your choice, right? Well, it has, it's, it's a, it has a lie. It's a real thing, right? It's not just a command-driven um, uh, voice uh, attendant. And um, so this uh, woman's voice, uh, Jaxi, you know, starts falling in love with them. And then when he goes on a, a date, she does some mysterious things with his phone and sends out some inappropriate text to his coworkers. And so, you know, it's like a being, but here, here's the point. He throws the phone away and he goes to the store. It's Apple, uh, Apple store, gets a new phone and Jaxi's on it. And he, he does that like three times. And then finally they reach a, a truce and um, Jexy appears in the last scene of the movie on uh, his big, bad, evil former boss's phone. So the, the, the boss turns on the phone and here's Jexy to essentially annoy and not quite destroy uh, the, the individual's life. But when you were talking, Michael, that's a perfect example. Now, again, it's, this is a stretch, but you get the point that this software, AI software that is a being moved from phone to phone to phone <laughs> and then went up the food chain. <laughs> well, look, uh, it's interesting you say that because it brings to mind an issue that I had with a client just last week where um, they've logged into their Google Chrome browser and they've put all their passwords and their life basically into the storage of the memory of this Google Chrome browser, yeah, that's right. um, including their history and all their extensions and everything else. And one of their extensions had malware in it. And of course, as soon as they logged on to another computer, wow, fantastic, all my life has come with me onto this other computer. And so did this piece of malware. Um, and where, where that actually gets interesting is that it eventually got across to his phone. And his phone... He found some photos on his phone of himself, but he was asleep. How did the phone take a photo of him asleep? And then he worked out that he charges his phone in a stand and it faces his bed. He dug a bit deeper and found out that all the Android apps on the phone and the Google interface and all the rest of it, this malware had been following him. And then of course, along came the debits from the bank and everything else because he does his banking on the same phone. So lateral movement is not just the computer in the next cubicle beside you. Lateral movement is anything that connects anything, basically. So yeah. your Google Chrome browser, your extensions, your, your favorite way to save passwords so that you don't have to remember them on another PC can end up being a problem. Um, so you've got to think about where is my data going? Yes, it's all cloud-based. That's cool. That's great. But where is it moving between? Where is it going between? Have I protected those devices? And again, little things like um, apps that spy on you that move between phones, as you suggested, that's just, that's the world we're in. We yeah. need to think about how we protect ourselves. Yep. All right, gentlemen, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, bring this uh, Boeing 737 MAX in for a landing now that we're flying again. <laughs> 
a little humor there. Um, thanks, thanks so much, and we'll talk to you next month. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Hey, Michael, good seeing you. Take care. You too. See you later.